22.2 was just announced. CrossFit Games open. This is our tips and tricks from Mayhem Nation. We'll have K-Star on here. We'll have some other athletes kind of break down. Uh, a lot of transitions. Deadlift, burpee, up to 10 from one, back down to one. Lots of transitions. Be ready for the tips and tricks. Here we go. What's going on, Mayhem family? It's week two. How did the week one go? Were you able to give her and then also get the tissues recovered and then get some training in this week? Remember, our goal is to test ourselves, see how our training is going, try to understand where our weak spots are. Because for a lot of us who just train regularly and don't have a sport we compete in or don't have a sort of an outside skill to evaluate our training, the Open is an important opportunity for us to sort of have a season, right? This is our fitness season where we get to test our fitness and sort of really go head to head and feel a little bit nervous and, and all the things that stopped happening to us once we started training. So I'm a huge fan of the Open for this reason, if you, especially if you don't compete like you used to compete as a kid or when you were in college. So this week, we're facing down the hundreds, and I actually really like this couplet. And what I really like about it is uh, we're gonna see efficiency win um, and be rewarded, especially for people who feel like they wanna do this multiple times. Round your back and just hinging over and do a bunch of you know high hip round back rounds uh, is expensive. And what you'll see is that if we can mitigate that, then we're going to be able to get more training in during the week. So we're gonna talk about strategies to mitigate that, leave your hips high and just do good mornings on the bar. The second thing is, I think this is a great opportunity to talk about breathing in here and relaxation. Um, and you know what we're thinking about is testing our movement competency. So if you didn't film yourself last week, film yourself this week and see if you can make an understanding of where you started to make different decisions and what were some of the components to that. So what we're trying to do during this movement prep piece is give you all the advantages of being able to have choice in your movement strategy. So if your movement strategy is to leave your hips high and just kind of go up and down really fast, that's a movement strategy. But I want to make sure that you have all the available sort of body language so that you can do that. And remember, come out unharmed. I'm a huge fan, and when I mean come out unharmed, I mean without like a wicked back pump and so that you could actually do something the next day. I also love that this is a 10 minute cap so that if you are a beginner, this is your first open, this gives you a chance to really work on skill and technique and efficiency and, uh, and sort of be limited by how much work you can do in 10 minutes instead of keep going for an hour. So four big ideas today. Number one, warm up the back. So what's interesting about this is that most of us, it's 100 deadlifts, it's very reasonable volume, believe it or not. The intensity is kind of up there, but a lot of us are gonna to wanna to save our spines, so like, oh, I don't wanna get tired. And that can be a real mistake. So my recommendation is, you know, as we're doing this general warm up, last time we had, we saw a lot of assault bike, I suggested that as part of a warm up. You'll notice down here, warm shoulders. It's gonna be again, because we're doing so much burping and sort of stabilizing during the deadlifts. But if we can get the back warm and just being upright doesn't really get my back warm. So things like some good mornings, uh, just giving yourself a chance to really let those erectors and those tissue systems come up to speed and come up to temperature. And I'd even say grab a light kettlebell and perform some sets of 10 just during your warm up, like much lighter. If you normally swing a 53, go lighter. If you normally swing a 35, go lighter. But the idea is, hey, let's just make sure that those tissues are pumped and engorged with blood and you'll see that they'll perform a little better. Um, so number one, really warm up the back. Number two, let's get ready to open the hip. So while this is a hip flexion dominant piece today, clearly, one of the things that happens is if I'm struggling to open the hip because my hip is short, that's gonna lead me into an overextension where my back starts to kind of get pulled. And then from here, no one reloads. Everyone's gonna to have to come back and sort of round. And what we end up doing is putting a lot of motion into the low back instead of keeping it firmly anchored in the hips. Ideally, I'm gonna make some choices about my grip that I'm gonna move my hands a little wider and for the idea that maybe I have to pull the bar this much further. But if I move my hands a little wider, I can get my shoulders back into a little bit more mid-range position. A really narrow grip is gonna force me to be rounded and as I fatigue, it's gonna be difficult for me to finish 
and open up the hip all the way and get behind the bar. If my hand is just a little bit wider, closer to a clean grip, you'll see that you can get your shoulders a little bit more mid-range. Again, you don't have to be wide, snatch grip all the way back, but I want you to have choice. And if your hands are too narrow, you're not gonna have a lot of choice. So hands a little wider, suddenly you can be a little bit more mid-range. That's gonna make it easier for you to bring your hips through. So um, getting ready to open the hip also means a little global extension. And what I'm talking about is being able to open up this whole chain because not only am I finishing with the hip open, but as I go from that burpee to bar over, obviously we know that this sort of split lunge position is the fastest way up. And a lot of people are gonna end up doing that because we have a hundred of these. So being able to have this, this ability to get the hip open will make a big difference. So let's talk about how we would prime hip flexion, get the hip open simultaneously. So number one, classic, classic hip opener. So throw this in. Let's just make sure that we've got access to the front of the hips with some isometrics. And what I suggest is keeping that butt squeezed, playing around, kind of classic hip opener, but just do some lunging in this position to open up that hip a little bit and just make it so that this position is easier to snap up in. So part of your warm up, some easy sets of 10 left, easy sets of 10 right, some, some kettlebell swings, just want to make sure that this position is easy. So as you're doing that burpee to prep, sort of push up over the bar, you've got access here and that will make it easier for you to bring your hip through. So some active lunges here, not some staticness. When we're talking about making sure that I have complete hip flexion, if I get tired, it's obviously gonna be very fast to keep the hips up and just tap and go, right? This is gonna be a tap and go nightmare. But if I start to feel like, hey, that's getting expensive on my low back, Clearly, that's not a good deadlift. And what I really would like to do is put this into the quads. So if I can put this into the leg push and not the hip extension, it's gonna be a lot more uh, sort of energy expedient. So what I wanna make sure is that I can close my hip more effectively. And that introduces us to the hip capsule mode. So go to TRS if you want more information. But basically, I'm gonna load this leg, vertical femur, and I'm gonna push around, keeping all my weight. I'm not dropping into a sort of pigeon here. I've got all my weight going through the femur, and I'm gonna play with rotation here. So I'm gonna make sure I have my internal rotation even straight, and I'm gonna keep that knee pushing into the ground, trying to get that femur back. So in between these sets, I just wanna noodle on this end range flexion. But don't just collapse here, because that's just fulcruming the femur up. Instead, keep that line of force going into the ground here. So now I'm driving into the ground and I can noodle around on these positions. And just a couple minutes of playing with this will improve your ability to close the hip. So again, we're gonna get some hip flexion and probably a, a kettlebell swing is as much as we're gonna need. But being able to have a little bit more load in the tissues so as I press up to burpee and, and go to that jumping position to be able to jump over in this lunge shape, that'll be easier. And then having a hip that I feel more comfortable closing, will, as I fatigue, I will be less likely to keep my hips high. Lastly, we've got that long assault bike warm up, some jump roping, if you don't have an assault bike, I just wanna get a lot of blood into this. This is gonna be kind of a throwaway movement for a lot of people. So we've got our shoulder wheels and we're doing our spin up. We're getting the shoulders really engorged with blood. But one position that will help is this, if you hook the band here, put it on your elbow and then turn away. This can be really helpful in making it so it's more effortless to get that shoulder in extension. We're also hitting some of the internal rotation in a hang shape required for the, for the barbell. So I'm trying to restore my ability to hit this internal rotation and just touch this corner for a second so that if you don't run out of room doing the burpee, that your shoulders don't have to dump forward because that just starts to get super expensive in those big sets of eight, nine, 10. So again, you know, <clears throat> I think the work volumes aren't big. It's really about these quick transitions and the more effortlessly I can transition, the less energy I get to expend in these positions, the better. Warm up the back. I can't recommend that enough. Afterwards, we'll talk about how to cool down. 
get that hip open with some of that sort of lunging position. I, you know, I think that gets lost in a lot of people's warm-ups. Prime that hip flexion. We've got kettlebell swings. We've got some easy hip capsule mode, warm shoulders, getting those bikes going, and then just touching that position because our athletes are always de deficient in hang shape and in that press archetype. So the more efficiently I can just get to the bottom, it doesn't cost me anything where I have to compensate and push from, that will be more efficient. Lastly, look for places to breathe in here. Really get on your breathing so that you're pressurizing, repressurizing, taking the moment to get a big breath in, especially when you're on the ground, ventilating. You know, if you're doing that high rep uh, deadlift, it's gonna be trickier if you can really take a breath at the beginning of the rep and then pressurize and go and then repressurize to your best and then use that burpee time to really do a good job ventilating, I think you'll cruise right through this. Uh, again, the keys for me is I want to know how you feel after this. Did you burn the whole thing down? You got through the workout, but your back is in lockdown and your shoulders are cramping. I don't want you to feel like that. You know, I want you to feel like you came out of this and like, hey, I did some work and I haven't gone and sacrificed my mechanics or my tissue tensile strength and ability so that I could continue to train this week. Remember, we're trying to come out of this unharmed and we're using this as an opportunity to test our positions. Some simple ideas, go get it. All right, I'm here with Director of Online Programming, Jake Lockhart. We had four athletes just go through it. We're gonna to talk to you kind of the elite and the RX, uh, things to think about. Jake's got a belt on. Why do you have a belt on? You got a Velcro belt on. Oh, belt up. Oh. No, quick transition to a quick Velcro belt. There okay. You go. Um, I don't know if Taylor really tightened her belt much or kept it relatively loose. It's there if you need it. Uh, it's kind of like a warm hug, you know, like I'll probably keep it there just in case I need it, um, but probably won't rely on it too much. On the deadlifts, you want to make sure you are bracing on those deadlifts. You don't want to take too much time to set up though. Um, if 225 is light, for most elite, it should be relatively light, a, a weight you can move pretty quickly, grab it and go. Think about bracing though uh, right before you start because your low back and midline will get cooked. Burpees are surprisingly taxing on the front side as well. So think about that while you're doing it. Uh, a couple different things we talked about on the burpee. Jake, you wanna demo kind of the step up? Something we talked about, you may have done it last week on the box jump over, was facing one way and kind of pivoting on it um, versus doing the spin around. If you're doing 100, reps where you're spinning on the burpees, you might get a little dizzy. I had to do that on the box. I do not do that on the burpee. Jake will show you the kind of the step up burpee. Um, and you switch legs when you step up. That's what we were kind of figure out earlier. So figure out your rhythm, what you're gonna do when you go. What I do and could recommend if you're not completely gonna blitz the burpees is to come down, use the warm effect on the way up. And I'm always facing this direction. So then I will step up with my right step up there and then hop like so. A little bit faster, look like this. Remember on the burpees, it doesn't need to be a two feet takeoff and land. So you can come off the ground at different times and land at different times, just make sure you're jumping. If you're going a little bit faster like Rich. I do a little bit of a hybrid of a, a mixed jump into. So you're down and it's up and I'm already transitioning sideways here. Quick little hop and up like that right there. Quick little hop. Don't overcomplicate and start trying to change up your burpee too much. I do like the fact that we are not worrying about the two foot takeoff, but don't, I mean, unless you want to spend a ton of time working on stepping over and all that stuff, do what you normally do, but you just don't have to worry as much about the two foot takeoff on this. I like that. Um, I'm good with that. It's a lot of transitions. Yeah, it's what did we say, 49? Or no, uh, 39. Like 30, around 39 transitions. So obviously a lot of transition there, but the transitions are drop the bar and move or pick up the bar and go. A lot of transitions last week, a lot of transitions this week. K-Star is going to show us how to warm up or may have already showed us how to warm up. Depends on how Scott laid this video out. Tej is going to tell you um, what to think about for scaled. We'll have some more fun. What's up, Mayhem athletes? We have a lot of burpee over the bar. So here are my tips on how I enjoy doing burpees and expending the least amount of energy. One, I like to use my quads since I'm using my posterior chain on the deadlifts and get low to the ground and then land kind of flat on my belly and chest so I don't use my arms too much. And then I like to step nice and close and then jump over. If you want to keep the heart rate down, get low too, step down, same thing, try not to control the descent too much, and then step in close and hop over. So 
Keep that heart rate down, breathe through those burpees, especially when you're on the ground, and go crush 22.2. Hey, one more thing before we move on to scale, we wanna talk about deadlift setup and the reps. For this, what I like to think about is feel the steel, walk up to my shins are touching the bar, that makes me make sure my shins will be vertical. For me, that's good, loads my hamstrings, I'm ready to pull. With this too, you can't use grip, so keep that in mind, and then have that belt there, so if you wanna press into it with your stomach, Brace, that's good to do. You set up here, have that upper back locked in and go. You'll notice I'm using a control bounce. I'm not just slamming it. Make sure your arms don't bend there. Lock out every rep. Don't be that guy that's leaving the hips closed a little bit. Stand up all the way. You can still move fast through that, but there's gonna be a lot of towing the line in this workout, so make sure you complete all your reps and get to the deadlifts nice and clean. Hey guys, if you're here for the scaled version of 22.2, I got your back. We're going one to 10, and then back down to one of deadlifts and bar facing burpees, but we got a lighter barbell, so 135 for the guys, 95 pound for the ladies. Hey guys, what's up? So we're gonna talk through some tips and trips on 22.2, very similar to the RX version. So if you watch through that, these will be similar. But we've got deadlifts and burpees. The deadlifts, the time on the bar is gonna be a lot less in comparison to the time we're gonna be spending on those burpees. But we wanna make sure we're very efficient on that deadlift. Grabbing the bar, keeping those transitions short, quickly as we stand up, nice tight core. Um, if you're gonna be breaking the burpee, or the deadlifts, excuse me, make sure those breaks are quick. We can recover a lot of time there, so just drop the bar, sorry, maybe drop the bar, and then right back on it. So she deadlifts, she drops from the top, and then right back on it, she can pick it back up. So keeping those rest times short on the deadlift. For the burpee, with scaled, we get to step over the bar. So that's something that's a little bit different than our X, and we can really use this to our advantage. I definitely recommend stepping up, and then as you step over, if you watch Kelsey, she's not gonna spin in a circle, but use a different leg each time as she steps up and over the bar. So let's get after this one, guys. Good luck, you got it. If you're here for the 22.2 foundations, stick around for the tips and tricks. The 22.2 workout is a one to 10, back down to one ladder of deadlifts with 75 pounds for men and 55 for women, and then burpees. All right guys, so we have 22.2 foundations. So same thing as we saw in RX and scaled with the deadlifts, but we're gonna have uh, 75, 55. So Tasia's here is just gonna show you how we can do some quick singles. You may have seen that in the scale. So just right back to it, kind of keeping that heart rate nice and low. Now, something different in this one than in the other two is that we are not gonna be doing burpees over the bar. Instead, we're just gonna be doing a burpee either right there on the ground behind your bar. Perfect, she steps up, and as you notice, she's jumping and clapping behind the head. That is something that is necessary in foundations, but if you also need to do it to an elevated target, I mean box, uh, you can. So Tasia's gonna demonstrate that for you. So here, same exact thing, we're still jumping, still putting our hands behind our head. This just allows us to not have to go all the way down to the ground if that's a limitation for you. So good luck. So you've got your shaker cup in your hand, you're getting that glycogen back in, you're drinking some water, you're coming down. Remember, think about the best athletes in the world. They don't just run hard and then sit around and cheer their friends on. I need you to keep moving. Try to get a big walk in, Get a little bit of another session in later in today where you're just keeping that engine going if you can. And if you don't have availability to do another session later on, let's see if we can give you a 20 minute piece here. So 10 minute red line, 20 minute easy steady state piece would be great. So that'd be my first thing I would do. Try to get a walk tonight uh, after this session, walk in the morning in addition to your other training. I just wanna get this non-exercise activity and I wanna tell your nervous system everything's cool here. If you have never played with blood flow restriction, this is a perfect time to do it. If you can take two voodoo bands, would work also. And if you went on the upper body, just for 40 or 50% comfort. You should be able to keep them on, nothing gets numbed and tingly, just wrap them like 40 or 50% out of 100% in terms of discomfort. For the lower body, you can go 50 or 60%. They don't need to be very tight, but they need to be a little bit thick. If you have some BFR cuffs, what we're gonna do for the upper body is somewhere like 80, to 120 max on the pressure. And then we're gonna do, uh, I don't know, what do we say, uh, 120 to 180 on the lowers. And the idea here is that we're just gonna pump these up, we'll wrap with the voodoo floss, and then do some work. Doesn't matter what it is, 
30 seconds on of work, 30 seconds of rest. And we're going to repeat that three times. Instead of a five-time session, we're just going to do three minutes. So it's a three-minute piece, but it just gets the whole system pumped with blood. It's a great finisher to reduce the session costs. So I'm trying to up our game a little bit in terms of our recovery and our sophistication. Again, get comfortable both sides. You can do curls. You can do push-downs. Just some silly bodybuilding exercise you can do for 30 seconds. It doesn't matter. The whole system will get chained. Or you can get on the assault bike and ride that thing with the lower cuff. So the idea here, 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest. Repeat that three times, three minutes, lower body, three minutes, upper body, get a big flush. They'll help you feel better. If you have BFR cuffs, use them. If you don't, get some because you're going to use them later on a lot, I promise. And more importantly, you can just be done with Voodoo Floss. All right. If you don't have that stuff, let's talk about where I think the big pieces are. So last week we talked about kind of recovering the front of the shoulder, and hopefully that helped. I've got a couple other ideas. I think I want to get lats and shoulders and low back. So here's what I'm thinking. Throw a band over the top, like we did last time, and I want to just make sure that you're adding in this motion. So keep your belly button tight. Don't let yourself drop into extension. You just did plenty of that. And even if you just did some easy motion, this is kind of a decompression idea. I can hang out here and really get just a lot of decompression into that low back. So pushing back and forth, taking some big breaths, trying to flex to mid-range, flex. Don't go into extension. You just did tons of that. Flex to mid-range. Just trying to get some input in here and to get your lats open a little bit. Lats have to do a ton of work stabilizing on that deadlift and they can make that back stiffer than we think. So I love this for just, you know, moving around. If you don't have access to it, just grab a bar, keep your feet on the ground, walk them into flexion a little bit, and just make sure that you've got access to your ranges. Just taking some breaths. Again, you don't need to full hang. It can be a very short bar. You can go to the kids bar and just see if you can get a little bit of motion in here, some big breaths, and you'll feel that we can get a little bit of length and just get those that back to be under less threat. For the lats and shoulders, if you have a ball, cool. What we're gonna try to do is get this ball into the rear of the shoulder. So this week, we're gonna try to focus on just getting some restoration back into this system to get our rotation and rotator cuff turned back on. We did a ton of isometric work here. And so I'm just rolling around something soft, rear the shoulder, three or four minutes. And then I'm interested in the rear delt triceps here. That's gonna help for all that pushing we did. We're basically in this long lever position, this plank position, which is the bottom of the burpee. That's what we're working on. And we're restoring that motion. And then I can sneak in to the back in the area of the scapula here. But really, whatever feels tight. You'll feel that rear of the rotator cuff is like, oh, I did something there. So add some rotation here, get some motion, get a little scrubbing in, that will make a big difference. If you have don't have a ball, grab your roller and you can basically do the same thing. You can get on here and still hit this rotation in that rear. Don't get just get sucked into the drama of the lat, scrub back and forth. Get those tissues down regulated. But really the rotation piece, I cannot recommend enough. That will make it so you don't lose that rotation and kind of get stuck in this internal rotated position. Rotation is the first thing to go when you fatigue. Lastly, we talked about last week, kind of low back stuff, but here is the homework for tonight. I want you to, or afterwards, if your back is a little cooked, I want you to get up on the wall and put your legs straight up and this is a highly restorative position because most of us are gonna have some tension in the hamstrings. As we bring our legs up on the wall, it's gonna naturally force our backs into a little bit of flexion. So this is a wonderful position to get your back to chill out and just to restore that hip flexion position, that 90 degrees, we should have 90 degrees here. <clears throat> legs up, the legs get heavy, they drop into the, the back of the sockets, you can breathe. So if you can get home tonight, 10 minutes, watch TV in this position. You can text in this position, right? You can get your straw and drink your recovery drink, but just a little bit of motion in the hips. There's that rotation in this position, hanging out. If you want to push the back of your knees into the ground, that will lengthen the hamstrings. Just, you know, make sure you can breathe. Do some, do some sets where you hold it for, you know, 10 seconds, relax, hold it for 10 seconds. But this time, this week, I want you in this position, feet up on the wall. It's my favorite recovery shape, recovery position, and you'll find that it'll make you right as rain. So again, our goal this week 
is to sort of assess how we felt after that training session. That should just feel like work and we shouldn't feel blown out or stressed or, or back in lockdown. We wanna be able to say, hey, I was able to swallow that 10 minutes of work and still do some more work this week. Film yourself, look at what your strategies are. Where did you fall apart? What was going on? Here are some ideas to get your tissues recovered so we can continue to work through this and pretend like we're professional athletes. Like we have a season where we have to train in between games. And that's what this, the Open is all about. Good work, we'll see you next week. Oh, 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 oh,